Backpack is the nature photographer's steady companion. Wherever he goes, and so is the back pain. Without the backpack though, none of this would be possible. But what backpack to use and what you bring on a trip is a big question. In this video I will tell you what I bring on a trip that might take 4 to 7 days. What I think is essential might though vary from what you think is best. I hope that I can help you with future trips and if you have tips for everyone watching, leave them down below. Sometimes there will be marked advertisement in the upper left corner. I have sponsors, the rules in Norway are different than elsewhere and I don't want to get sued or mislead anyone. With that out of the way, let's talk about what's in my expedition backpack. Welcome to the beautiful islands of Trana on the Norwegian coast. I'm on my last day here on a photo trip and I thought I used the time to give you an insight what's in my photography expedition backpack. And we start with camp, we go over to clothing, we do food and cooking and especially electronics and photography devices. So let's start with the camp and the camp is a tent, something to sleep on and hygiene. I'm using a tent that's not a tunnel tent on a trip like this because I want something with a structure in it so that it's on some ground easier to build it up. Then we have an easy air mattress, we have a sleeping bag that goes to zero degrees right now and we have a pillow that can be blown up. So I would change these out in colder conditions to something that has a higher R value and mat on the floor, but for a summer trip like this, this is certainly enough to sleep in and stay warm. Then hygiene wise, we have a lot of different things. We have of course, how beer grills would say it, jungle currency, so toilet paper is essential, uh, something to disinfect your hands. Of course, first aid kit. Now inside the tent, let's talk about food and cooking. And we start with cooking and of course uh, for most of the things on these trips you need warm water and normally I have a, a yeah, canister of gas and this is 230 grams, 460 milliliters and this is roughly enough for a week for me if I make warm water in the morning for breakfast, a midday for a soup and then in the evening for a tea or for dinner. Um, I'm using uh, this effective system here where you have a really small pod and it's directly connected so it boils the water in here half a liter in around two minutes, two to three minutes. Then of course we need the food and I normally have some tea with me. Mostly you need a spoon for all of this food that just needs water and a knife is never bad. And then we mainly have daily rations and mine is normally that I have half, this is empty now because I'm on my last day, uh, half a package of peanuts or any nuts uh, for a day calorie wise. Then I have uh, three to four um, muesli bars, a soup, some porridge for the morning. Uh, there's milk powder in there, but as you can see, I also put some like cocaine. Okay some vanilla sugar, a hot chocolate, never wrong for your spirits. And then of course, a main meal that will keep me yeah, satisfied over the evening. Those I normally have packed and then I also bring a bit of chocolate for like the special need if you have a really bad day. On a trip like this, of course, when you make food and you boil it, you need water. So I have this one, which can roughly hold two liters. 
then I can have it on hikes while it can also transport drinking water to my camp. That's really helpful. And I have a bottle with me, of course, also for hikes. But this bottle, for example, you could have yeah, warm water inside to heat your sleeping bag with a sock around it in the night when you have a cold night. Uh, the trip was supposed to be colder than I expected. So I wish I took a, a filter bottle with me that I have so that I could have just taken water out of every stream. That would have made my life in some situations on this island trip a bit easier. A very important part is of course clothing because on one side you don't want to get cold, uh, you don't want to get windswept, you don't want to get wet, but you also don't want to pack too much and save weight. And clothing is a thing where we shouldn't really spare on weight because we should have the right clothing. I normally bring one jacket and that's an eco shell that uh, guards me from wind, that guards me from water. On a trip to the mountains in fall I would also bring another either a down jacket or a wool padded jacket, so a second jacket to keep myself warm. Of course I have some rain trousers and that's kind of my outer shell and I have normal trousers, hiking trousers. I have one set which is entirely for sleeping. That should consist of wool because wool can absorb a lot of yeah, smell and wool keeps you warm. So in general I would always just wear wool. I have one set that's for my daily activities and hiking and of course that also smells after a week but it smells way less than anything else where you would need like normal five cotton shirts. So keep everything wool, keeps your weight down and keeps the smell down is the best you can hope for. Furthermore I have a different selection of like upper shell let's say. I have a normal small beanie here. Uh, or I have a headband that's a bit thicker and bigger for when I have to rest or I stay in a place. I have a wool gaiter, um, a not too thick scarf for the really cold days or mornings when I'm out photographing. I have some photography uh, gloves that keep me warm. On this trip, as I thought, yeah, really it would get colder. I brought a second sweater, so I brought this thin one and I brought a really thick wool sweater. Um, normally I would have taken one sweater in a size in between. Uh, the last thing I packed in is some camouflage for birds. I didn't really have too great use of that, but if you're looking after birds, it's of course kind of, of good use to have some camouflage with you. Last but not least is maybe the shoes. And I brought really big boots. I would have brought some smaller ones if the weather forecast looked nicer. But the thing with these is I know that they're completely waterproof until around here. So if I have all my shell gear on for rain, I would be safe and dry. And that's the most important part. Not walking so far on these small islands. So it is okay. Though these shoes are also a bit of a mess and yeah, a bit much to drag around. But normally they're on your feet and then it's not so much weight that you drag around with you. But for the emergency case, I'm glad that I brought these because it could always happen that you have a storm out here and then, yeah, you would be in a way worse situation without them. Last topic and maybe the most important one, photography equipment and electronics. I start with the simple thing of a tripod. I have a really big tripod with me with a plate that I can adjust in yeah, all directions. And then I have two tripod hats. Once I have a ball head for everything vlogging, for everything landscape related. And then I have a fluid hat for everything that I do wildlife wise or that I do really yeah, more professional filming wise. To the topic of tripod, small tripod for vlogging. And of course we have a microphone and we have two cameras. Uh, one of them is filming right now, that's the Z6, then I have the Z50. This is my main vlogging camera, while the Z6 does the more, let's say, professional work. Um, in the end I sometimes use the Z6 because uh, the batteries in here don't last that long right now. I'm, I'm not completely con yeah, convinced of that. But uh, this is also good because it has the same mount and is my backup camera. Then, of course, I have my trusty 200-500, not fully weather sealed, uh, that's why I have some cover for it with me. And for each lens and size I basically have a VND, a variable neutral density filter, because you just need these for filming in every condition. So I have those for like the smallest lens 
on the Z uh, on the crop sensor, my vlogging lens. I have those for the big lens and that's what I definitely always have. And the rest is really about gear and keeping your gear in spot beside. Yeah, maybe teleconverter on top, but then we have of course batteries and something to clean um, and memory cards. I have something to blow out dust from my sensor. And what is really important is of course a power bank that can charge your phone, but also powered-wise your camera. And we also need some sun in the end in some situations. And that's why I have this small solar panel. I hang it on the tent and then I put I connect something to it to charge the power bank or charge the camera. Um, if someone has a better setup, like USB-wise for the Z50, let me know. Uh, right now I have to charge batteries and camera and I don't like that too much. That was all that's in my photo expedition backpack. I hope you enjoyed this small summary. I hope you could learn something from it. It adds up to a backpack between 20 to 30 kilos. Always consider what you really have to take with you, uh, how far you're gonna walk with all the weight. And uh, then I just wish you just wonderful trip. Check out these episodes from the islands of uh, Trana around the Norwegian coast or my adventures in the mountains. I see you in another video and have a really good trip yourself. Now inside the tent. Uh, now inside the tent. <laughs>